Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and there are seven games you need to make sure you grab from the PS3 digital store before it closes. Give me a few minutes and we'll go through them. The digital store is closing for the PSP, PS Vita and PS3 and many games will be officially lost. Some of these games are crap like the rotating octopus and no one will be upset to see that go but there are also many gems that these systems will now lose. Everyone who owns a Sony handheld has hacked it by now because it's so easy to do, especially the PSP. It's literally just putting a couple of files on a memory stick and anyone that's not a complete spaz will be able to find ROMs on the internet. Internet. The PS3 on the other hand is a much trickier beast. Although it is possible to do, there are a lot more hoops you need to jump through to achieve the same god tier status my jailbroken PS3 has. I did a video on it and you should check that out, but TLDR, it stores PS1, 2 and 3 games on its hard drive as well as homebrew and digital store backups. I highly recommend you do this because some games like Outrun were deleted from the digital store ages ago and now are only available on pirate ROM websites. But don't start crying to me about piracy because I also own an unmodified PS3 which houses the many hundreds of games I actually paid for. It's from this PS3 that I've drawn up today's list and my list is very different from the copy paste job most games websites are printing. Pretty much each gaming website has just listed the same 10 games as they all copy each other and none of these people actually play. They just create clickbait for ad revenue. Here's the real list. Let's go in hard and Climax right away. Sega's home port of the fantastic arcade game Afterburner Climax should be high on your list of games to get while you still can. It's basically a reimagining of the classic late 80s sprite scaling shoot 'em up. The core gameplay is the same. Line up the crosshair to lock onto enemy planes, fire missiles once you've locked on, chain the shots together for extra points and do a barrel roll to dodge enemy missiles. But every single part of this game has been brought up to modern expectations. The flight controls are smoother than a presentation by Mark Cerny. The PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. What does that mean? The graphics look incredible for something that is over a decade old at this point. The music is great, although it actually le lets you select the original Afterburner 2 music, which somehow suits this game more than the original. The feeling of zipping around the screen, blowing up enemies to classic Afterburner music is just fantastic, and the enjoyment this game gives only increases the more you play. This is down to the fact that playing through the game and hitting certain conditions will unlock EX options. These can be auto fire on guns, stronger armor, more credits, infinite missiles, and even a large crosshair. Even though the game is great fun in its vanilla state, getting the higher tier EX options after hammering through the game a few times not only gives you a nice sense of progression, but also rewards you with some really high powered abilities. Smashing through the game with infinite missiles, improved crosshair, long combo windows, and fast climax bar refills really allows you to rack up huge high scores and is a ton of fun. You need to have this game in your collection, so download it while you can. Your first question is probably why would a PS1 game be on this list? Well, that's easy. The PS3 allows you to play PS1 disc or store-bought digital PS1 games. The problem with getting the disc version is that the price of this on the second-hand market Ooh. requires you to take an eBay shafting first. When you can buy the exact game digitally for £10 is a no-brainer for people that just want to experience the game in its original form on real PlayStation hardware. There are 
modern re-releases of this on the PlayStation 4 and other platforms, but these are the tweaked versions which have differences over the original game. The PS3 digital download is the same version as what you'd find on the original disc, so this is really the one you want to go for. I probably don't need to explain what this game is about, as pretty much everyone in the world already knows. This is seen by many as the best game in the series, and rightly too, because it's great. If you don't want to have to lubricate your bum hole to pay the price of an actual disc, then this is without a doubt the best way to go. Remember, once the store shuts, the only way to play this version on PlayStation will be to take a pounding from an eBay seller or hacking your PlayStation. <laughs> One of the greatest arcade racing games of all time got its greatest version on the PS3. As good as the arcade version was, it had geometry popping like you can see here, and you can see it again here, as well as many other spots in the game. It's also pre-widescreen, so you're stuck in this 4x3 image to play in. The PS3 version fixes these issues by removing the polygon engine cap so you no longer have any popping. It widens the viewing area so you now get to play in a full 16x9. Not only that, but because this is an official Sega port and not a homebrew emulator, all the colours are correct. Also, if like me, you own a Logitech GT4 steering wheel, you can now have the full arcade experience at home with force feedback steering wheel support. All of this makes this the best version of one of the best arcade racing games ever that easily has the best music. I mean, what other game has a soundtrack that can beat Flying High? I wanna fly sky high Let's go together I wanna fly sky high Let's go together I wanna Yeah, yeah, oh Yeah, yeah Flying high Feeling good Ever want Super Smash Brothers on your PS3? Of course you did. That's why you bought PlayStation All Stars. Turns out you bought the wrong game. What you should have got is this Ragdoll Kung Fu. For fun, frantic four player couch battle sessions, this should be your go to PS3 game. You can play by yourself versus one, two, or three computer players, or two, three, or four player sofa matches against friends. Each person controls a little Kung Fu plastic action figure who has a type of ragdoll physique. Even though it sounds a bit janky, it controls really very well. Like Smash Brothers, it's easy to start playing but has layers of gameplay so it's not a shallow experience for those who want to get more out of it. Although you can get this on Steam, this game is far better suited to the PlayStation 3. Four players on a sofa is always better than four people huddled around a computer desk. So grab this one before it's gone, it's a proper forgotten gem. The other PS1 game on this list is called Ark the Lad. It's a JRPG with a decent story, tactical battle system, and some fantastic graphics. Seriously, this game has a really great pixel art style to it, but it also has an interesting backstory. When this came out in Japan, people really liked it, and the Western audience demanded a translated release. That didn't happen right away. It wasn't until over five years later that a collection pack finally made its way to the West that we really saw an official translation. Needless to say, like Castlevania, the disc of this game costs a lot of money, especially since you can only get it as part of a collection box set. So if you only want to play the first game, you have to get it along with three others. So the PS3 digital version only being £10 is well worth it. Get it now before it's gone.
GTI Club was a really fun arcade driving game and the amount of time we had to wait for a home conversion is almost criminal. But over a decade after its original debut, finally this game got a digital release on the PlayStation 3. So the PS3 offers the same great game, but now with greater resolution, high res textures, widescreen support and higher frame rates. It really does look nice on PS3, but due to a total recolouring of the game world, the graphics definitely have a different feel to what they did before. But either way, this is still the same top-notch gameplay as before, with you zipping around the southern coast of France, seeking out the shortcuts to try and get ahead of the rather difficult opposition cars. This is great fun and will be a real shame when the PS3 store closes and the only home port ever made is gone. <laughs> Just as I had finished this video, I found out that actually GTI Club was removed from the store in 2012 due to a licensing issue. So unless you do something shady like buy a PlayStation Network account with this game already on from one of those dodgy websites, you can't actually download this from the store anymore. But I would recommend jailbreaking your PS3 and downloading the game from a ROM site instead. It's far safer and you won't be scammed by some cock online. The final game in this list is Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. Now, you can play this game if you own Yakuza 6 and go to one of the arcades within that game because within the Yakuza 6 arcades, there are cabinets of Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. But who on earth wants to boot up Yakuza 6 every time they want to play Virtua Fighter? No, you might as well just get the standalone digital version and avoid all that faff. Now, why would you want the digital version of Final Showdown over the disc version of the vanilla Virtua Fighter? 5. Although the vanilla game does have the brilliant quest mode where you can go around the different arcades and play against AI that's based on data gathered from real Japanese Virtua Fighter players. In the final showdown version, the graphics, lighting and animation has all been improved. Plus, you have two new characters to play as. Gene, who is a karate dude who hits like a ton of bricks and can do huge damage to an opponent who is at the ring's fence. You also have sumo man Takashi who finally makes his return to final showdown. Down. He was in Virtua Fighter 3 on the Dreamcast, which is where he made his debut. He was left out of Virtua Fighter 4 on the PS2 because they said it was too hard to include him. He was not in the vanilla Virtua Fighter 5, but here he is back for Final Showdown. Anyway, the main point is Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown is the greatest fighting game ever made. Better than Tekken, better than Street Fighter, better than King of Fighters. The characters interact with each other far more smoothly. The commands feel much more natural to pull off and the amount that's actually possible with each character is so deep. To become a master of this requires a lot of skill and practice. If you want to play the best fighting game on the market, you need Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. It's that simple. Well, that's it for now. Abba. Ah,